We keep hundreds of animals here at the Reptarium. Awesome lizards, giant snakes, turtles, alligators, and even a sloth. But what if I could only keep five? You guys sloth. know that. Guys There's no doubt that Ivy, my green anaconda, is going to make the top five. When she comes out of shed, she's amazing. She had a giant meal recently. Ivy, uh, there's no way in the world I could live without that animal. Look at this guy Look over here. Look at how beautiful he is. Of course, he's the first animal that ever gave me stitches, but I still love him to death. He's really got a special place in my heart. He's so beautiful. He really does love the attention. He's just very cage defensive. But once he's out and kind of chilling out, I mean, look at how amazing that animal is. Definitely has to make my top five. What do you think? <laughs> Okay, sorry. There's a piece of grass on the lens. I think we have a pretty good guess of I what concur. Brian's favorite animals are. Here I in the agree. Reptarium. I think I would know now. Don't be so sure of yourself, Connie, because you know Brian always throws a scarf. He always throws one of those balls. He throws balls? Like a curveball. Like a Pokeball? Like nope. a Pokemon? Gotta catch them all? Curveball, when you think it's the right <laughs> answer, it's typically. Five animals. Only like five. You wouldn't have opened a whole freaking zoo, man. I hate to break it to you, but you're not in, buddy. Let me tell you something. If there's one thing I know about my he dad, loves saying the word Jehua. And Gecko's from New Caledonia. You are a Caledonian, but I don't think fine, you're fine, the fine. Caledonian I need. Leechianus <laughs> Gecko. That's top five. Think about how many hundreds of times we have told you that they're the largest gecko in the world. Hundreds of times. And that's because my dad's obsessed with them. New Caledonian. Giant gecko. Top five. Ha, ha, it's tough. So I definitely think Diddy and Dixie. Out, oh, relax, sweetheart, relax, relax. Okay. They are by far one of Brian's favorite animals. But do I think they make top five? Unfortunately not, because there's another animal that we had. Come here. Anyways, Bella is definitely in Brian's top five because this is the animal that started the whole reptilian, right? Like they have such a good bond as you can see. Come here, Bella. Come here, Bella. 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 Yeah, she don't even like me that much. But Brian, if he did that, she would come right down to him because she loves him and he loves her. And it's kind of not fair. Uh, gonna have to clean up. Oh, she's still going. Gonna have to do that later. There's something that's just absolutely adorable about Tyson, the Eastern Albino Box Turtle. I mean, box turtles are really cool. They have great personality. The fact that there's only a handful of these albinos in the entire world makes it pretty special too. And that's the reason he definitely make the top five. We'll take a look at salt. I mean, what an amazing animal. I remember seeing the first albino alligators, I mean, years and years and years ago and thinking, oh my gosh, they are so incredible. Never thinking that I would actually own one, actually two now with Freya. And salt has been such a great animal ambassador with people coming and holding an animal. And she's only gonna get better when she gets across the street in a giant enclosure through feeding experiences. No doubt about it, it has to make top five. I think Faust is one of Brian's favorite. He's one of my favorites. He's a living dinosaur and he's getting really heavy. Top five worthy? I don't think so. Skipping champion of 2023. You should close that. Close it. So, I'm gonna... Well, I'm so wet. I should have skipped. So, I'm gonna choose Salty as one of the top fives. Again, thank goodness this doesn't have to go in order because his order always changes. But Salty is just the most beautifulest, most calmest albino alligator you've done ever seen. But I really think that she's definitely gonna be top five. If she's not, I'm gonna go a little crazy. They're part of the reason the expansion's happening because they need a bigger enclosure. So, she has to be top five. I love you, Salty. Man, you never win because there's never part of the reason. Welcome, Sam, son of Sam, for a frog. I mean, look at this guy. He's huge and he's cute and he's pretty. But I just don't think that I can't see Brian picking him as one of his faves. You in shield. Ivy definitely probably would because he's mentioned it on several occasions that he's one of his favorites. She's big. She's got a mild temperament. I mean, what's in Because he's. This is kind of an interesting one because it count as one snake or two snakes in my top five. Not 100% sure, but there's no doubt because I've been so obsessed with two-headed snakes my whole life and the fact that we have one that's thriving and doing so good and really does bring a lot of people. And I've talked about this in the past. I love animals for myself, but I also love animals that bring other people into the animal world. And when people are curious about this amazing two-headed snake, it opens their eyes to how cool reptiles are. And that's why Ben and Jerry make the top five. Take a look at Night Fury. I mean, the color, the iridescence, the absolute 
absolute beauty. I mean, that was a dream snake of mine to have a jet black reticulated python like Night Fury. And although he's a little feisty, he still makes the top five. Tabasco. Snake of mine to have a As I would like to call him when he's being bad, Tobacco. El Diablo. This guy, he gave Brian his first set of stitches. Got him real good. He's really like calm right now surprisingly. He's pretty though. He's a real stoning animal. But here's the thing. You're sassy. So, not in the top five. Mike, I I'm doing something here. Alright, you had your moment. Now, let me have mine. <sighs> I finally stood up for myself. Bella. Bella Baby is definitely one of his favorites. She's got charisma. She's got talent. She's beautiful. Look at her. I think I got it. We all know my dad loves alligators, but not the wild type. My dad doesn't mess with wild types. My dad loves his albinism. And look at this. It looks fake. I promise you, it's real. And I'm not gonna bring out salt, because that's too much of a liability. But Freya, I can handle Freya. Top five. I remember seeing my first leech geckos down in Columbus, Ohio. Actually, the hampers had them there, and they were one of the few people in the entire country that had ever had gotten leechianus. They were really rare back then, and they're still rare now. And of course, the largest gecko, and they're just really amazing. But it was going back to those early days of seeing them and being so blown away, and not knowing if I would ever actually own an animal. So Reptar definitely is an amazing animal, and I just love the fact that he loves people. He's an amazing animal ambassador and look at that face. Unbelievable. And the way it feels. Just velvety. Definitely a top five. I can't think of a much prettier snake than Neo here. The Motley Golden Child Pied Reticulated Python. I mean just that jet black just like Night Fury. The iridescence amazing. Then that beautiful white coloring in it. Absolutely a stunning animal. I mean I tell you what. I just really don't know that I've ever seen a prettier mutation of an animal than Neo. And I just love her to death and that's why top seen a prettier mutator. Like, there's no doubt in my mind that he's one of his favorites. He got him at a very difficult mental stage when we got him. He also got him right before this expansion opener. Then we had had him on, you know, display, but we couldn't display him, and then now you can interact with him. A whole bunch of stuff happened over the last couple years. Unfortunately, I don't think he's top five. If he is, also gonna blow my mind. But, I have a couple more that are definitely on the top five. Boom, one of the top five animals. He says all the time that this, a big, beautiful green anaconda snake, one of the chillest, nicest, most lovable, curious creatures she's ever worked with. This has got to be on the top five. If no I'm... Way. No way, is that gotta be in the top five? Listen, stop cheating, go away. <laughs> this has gotta be in the top five right here. Uh, I've never seen her even pick it up. This is about Brian, not you. Bye-bye. If I'm wrong about this one, I'm, I already lost. Neapolitan is, I think, a pr relatively new addition. I think Brian is like excited by her, and she's like beautiful, obviously. However, I don't think she would be his favorite just yet. Maybe who knows through time. Um, Are you sure about that? No, sure? I'm not sure. You don't think it's the top five? I know I'm the newbie around here, but I've I've got some months on me already. I don't think it is top five. What else do you think is top five? Mike, since you're following me around like a puppy. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Can you take salt out for me? I I can't take her out. I've not been not? clear cleared to do it. I've never done it by myself. So if you could help me, I would appreciate that. You can be my Vanna White alligator. You can I'll get you a beautiful dress. You look stunning. Wow, that was getting her out. I think Salt would definitely be in the top five because she's just one of those show-stopping animals. She's so heavy. Can you pick her up, please? Mike? Mike? My are arms are shaking. Yeah, what again, dude? I mean, I like, her. the animal, she just speaks for herself. Albino, and her name is Salt, and that's cool. Oh my god, people are <laughs> Take shaking. Take a look at what a cool snake. You guys know that I was really early on in scaleless stuff. Had one of the first scaleless Texas rats, the first scaleless corn snakes, first scaleless ball pythons. There's just something about scaleless animals that I really like. Now, don't get me wrong. I want the ones that actually thrive, and the Texas rats actually do really well. Joker's really cool, and again, it's another animal that brings people in. They feel it. They go, what in the world? And then you can educate them on it. The Joker really impacts a lot of people's life, and that's why I want him to be in the top five. Bugatti the Bolins python. I mean, my goodness. I've said this before. I never thought in my entire life that I'd actually own a Bolin's python. And since I have, it's absolutely incredible. When we got Bugatti, he was just like that red rusty color. And then as it goes through that octogenic color change, it turns to that black with unbelievable iridescence. I mean, how is it possible that this animal doesn't make the top five? Monitor lizards. Everybody knows my dad loves monitor lizards, but he's got one in particular that's his favorite. 
And it's Beetlejuice. Haha, <laughs> gotcha. Where did you think I was going? Clearly the Bell's Face Lace Monitor from Australia, my dad's favorite country. Beetlejuice, I'm proud to say, you're in his top five. You know, Ivy is right up there with one of my favorite animals of all time, but I don't know that I could pick between Ivy and Bella because Bella was my first love. You know, I mean, she really was the animal that really founded my ideology that the Reptarium is based on. So I tell you what, I'm going to call her 1A or 1B. 1A and 1B would definitely be Ivy and Bella, but I don't know exactly what position I would put them in, but Bella, I love you so much. I mean, look at her, and she's such a snot. You know, she's just looking at me like, Dad, I'm not going to come down for pets. That's okay, I still love her. Elvis is having a little basking time right now, and I think of Elvis across the street. He's going to have a huge enclosure. It's going to be similar to Ivy's enclosure. It's going to have that water feature up front. It's going to have land around, and I think it's going to be something that's really going to add enrichment to his life instead of just going in the turtle pond that he does now we can actually have him in an enclosure that's always that way he's just so intelligent he's so cool and he was my first kind of big monitor that i had ever gotten it was like that dream animal that i had so uh he certainly belongs in the top five one of my top favorites in the reptarium i would say almost top five bugatti the bullish python now do i think he's one of brian's favorites yes absolutely brian loves this snake so 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 much but do i think he's one of brian's Top five? Unfortunately, I don't think so again. You dumped your bowl again, dude. I think, ugh, how are you? Elvis is top five. There is no doubt in my mind, unless he forgets him again. This big, beautiful animal. We do so much with this. I can't even talk laying down like this. I'm like having a stroke. Sorry, my brain juice went to the side. Anyways, we do so much with Elvis from everything from taking him to the park to interact with kids. We take him to PetSmart. I mean, look at the eye. We, you know, we let him walk around during open hours. We do the feeding with him. He's just so interactive all the time. And I mean, every time that we go buy special food like the squid and the shrimp and all that stuff, we always feed it to Elvis. Why? Because Brian loves this thing. I think Elvis is definitely top five. Oh, <laughs> Multifaciata or centric tongue skin. So this one has a special place in my heart because when we first opened up the Reptarium, this was such a popular animal. They always wanted to hold Perdita, they wanted to pet Bella, and they wanted to hold Potato. So, you know, now that we've gotten so many cooler animals, Potato doesn't have the limelight that he once had, but he's still an incredible animal and deserving of the top five. You guys know that we have three two-headed turtles, but our first two-headed turtle ever was Chopsticks. We actually went down to Mississippi to pick it up. Jay was with me. It was really cool to finally get Chopsticks. I mean, what an amazing animal. I love him to death. Top five animals. Chopsticks. Chopsticks. I mean, what an important part of my heart. Because he is just such a cool animal. However, if I gotta choose between him and Elvis, I gotta pick Elvis. He's got a little pile of pee. That's embarrassing. We we do clean that up, I promise. Elvis is just one of those animals that we work with so much. Do a lot of feedings with him. He comes out for the kids and open hours. He's just like one of those animals that's very charismatic and people love him and are drawn to him. I think that goes for Brian as well. So yeah, I definitely think he'd be in the top five. Bandit the false water cobra. Just a really oh, yeah. cool snake. I've always loved false water cobras. They call them falsies and they're just really an amazing animal. They've got that flat neck. They kind of act a little bit like a cobra, but they're really beautifully tame animal. You could do anything to bandit and he would never ever bite you whatsoever, unless you smell like fish or rodents or something like that, because they are ferocious feeders. But again, a cool animal you can take out because you can always trust him. He's super predictable and really cool and deserving of a top five mention. Of course, you guys know that my first snake that I ever bought when I was 15 years old was a Burmese python, a wild type just like Snazzy here. And that's why Snazzy has such a soft spot in my heart. He's not only a beautiful animal, unbelievable docile. It's a really good animal ambassador, but also I like the fact that we're representing a wild type Burmese python. So you can see him because I think that although the mutations are incredible, Jeffrey's obviously amazing, sunrise and stuff like that. Still, I think that the normal wild type Burmese python is really underrated with its beauty, right? It's got an amazing pattern and color palette. So he definitely belongs in the top five. Hello, welcome per to, oh, no, let's redo that. Hello. Welcome to Perdita's enclosure. $10,000 you can find the snake in this enclosure. Guess what? You can't. Why? She's not here. Why? She's at a zoo to you or a party. But I truly believe that Perdita is one of Brian's favorite animals as well because she's so gorgeous. We use her for a lot of things. That's why she's on a zoo to you. When Brian got her, she was all white and now she has a lot more black, a little bit more characteristic. Did I say that right? My brain is not working today. But I still don't know if she's top five. I feel like it's gonna be something that I'm not expecting. So I have one more animal 
I've mentioned a bunch of times how emerald tree boas were something that I used to look at all the time in this one particular book called Living Snakes of the World. I just loved them to death. I thought they were one of the most incredible animals going from red to green. The green color is beautiful. The red color is beautiful. Just an amazing snake. So Carl is absolutely incredible. And although he's a little bit cantankerous, certainly deserving of top five. Take a look at Bowser here, the prehistoric animal. I mean, wow, that animal is so cool. And I remember when I was younger seeing like little albino alligator snappers and thinking they're really cool. Never realizing that one day that I would actually have one that's over a hundred pounds. Bowser, unbelievable. Kids love him when they come here every single time they see him. He's going to get a really cool thing right at the entrance of the Reptarium across the street, so he's still going to be kind of a focal point animal and certainly a top five. Say it with me, Anaconda. Now, Verde, you may be his first love, but I hate to say it, but my dad's got a taste for the big girls. Follow me. Bam! Ivy. How many times? Have you guys watched the vlog? Or he's talking about Ivy for three, four minutes. That's a lot of vlogs. So if I were to guess, I'd go with Ivy the Green Anaconda. Juliet moved in the water. What am I? Juliet, you know what I'm saying? Ha ha ha. Anyways, that's okay because I think Juliet is in the top five. Oh my god, me too. No, you can't think that. No, I totally would have picked Juliet. Called it second. second. I call it first. Sometimes second is better than first. It's not. Depends. When is second ever better than first? Like when it comes to drinking something that may be poison. Uh, but you're still second to drink it, so you drink it anyway. No, you just you just see the first person drink the poison, and then you say, oh no, I'm not going to drink the poison. But you would still drink it. By or the time what about? I, I, you would already drink it. What, what's another good thing to be second place? I mean, the first child they say has it the hardest, you know, because. In the work, do can we stop talking about this? Yeah. So honestly, I think I'm gonna change my answer to Lucy because Lucy's had since she was hatched. Well, he hatched her, and that was like 15 years ago. Had so many battles, the sleepovers, all the things. But I think I'm gonna go with Lucy instead of Julia because she's just too new. I know they spent a whole lot of time also in hotel rooms and stuff, but like I think Lucy has that emotional attachment to Brian. Stop worrying about Lucy so much. Focus on the Wata. Now I think we get her moving, and then we can scoop out the thing. But Lucy's kind of not very happy. I started playing this new the Jedi. Sir Survivor video hey, game. Hey, hey, hey. Sorry. Come on. Go, go, go. Okay. It's an interesting consistency. Waterlogged, so it's been soaking a little bit. Loosens it up quite a bit. I don't know what else to say. It feels like poo. <laughs> How is it that space that you put up? I mean, you gotta love that animal. Matilda, of course, the Aldalbra tortoise, absolutely amazing. She does a little bit of climbing, there's no doubt about it. And you cannot believe how cool the enclosure we're gonna build her. Not only is it gonna be ginormous, I mean, like five times the size of this, but it's gonna have a water feature and it's gonna have waterfall and it's gonna have a place where she can go and actually bathe. It's gonna be amazing. I know she's gonna love it. She's gonna stop trying to climb out of her cage because she's gonna love it so much. I don't wanna tell you too much, but she's gonna have a really interesting cage mate. You guys won't believe this one. And to round off the top five, definitely Juliet and Lucy. Now, Juliet, I haven't had too long, but boy, oh boy, have I fallen in love with her. And of course, Lucy, I hatched her and had her for, gosh, I think 13, maybe even 14 years now. So she's been around a long time. I love giant snakes. You guys know that. So we have the kind of Lucy where she's a little bit crazy. She keeps your uh, skills honed and stuff like that. But then you have Juliet, who is super docile, that just hangs out and is a super cool animal. So these guys definitely round out my top five. Everybody knows how much my dad loves super cool animal drops, but we have to go to his original love bella what else do i have to say i mean he slept with her ew i think about it i think my dad's actually slept with a few animals here that's unsettling but either way bella's definitely in my dad's top five because he was the first animal he ever slept with he actually slept with you know, maybe you guys can see a pattern here. The truth is, is that every single animal at the Reptera, and even at BHP for that matter, are animals that I couldn't live without. I mean, I could have gone through every single cage and told you why I love that animal so much. So, uh, top five, maybe I'm not that good at math. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, there's a playlist that you can watch all kinds of videos. You can also hit that subscription button. It would mean a lot to me. Also, hit that like button while you're down there. Have a wonderful day, Reptile Army. You picked more than five? How many? Five of was the we game. We said top five, not how many? 20. So we all win? Oh my goodness.